For this lab lesson, we want to explore the ventral surface of the human brain. So I'm going to take this specimen and hold it up so that you can have a clear view of the ventral surface of the brain. And what I'd like to do is just walk you through the features of this brain surface from the front part, the anterior part of the brain, through the back part, the posterior part. So towards the front part of the brain, the first set of structures that we can note are these two long tracts on either side of the midline that sit on the bottom of the frontal lobe. These are the lateral olfactory tracts that terminate in an olfactory bulb. And as those names imply, these structures have to do with our sense of olfaction or our sense of smell. The next interesting feature we encounter is the optic nerve from one side and the other that come together and form an X shape. That X shape is called the optic chiasm. Chiasm means an X or a cross, so it's a crossing of the nerve fibers that form these two optic nerves. Just behind the optic nerves is the floor of the diencephalon, or the ventral surface of the hypothalamus. And there's a bit of a hole in this specimen which is where the stalk of the pituitary attaches to the hypothalamus. That stalk was removed, and in its place we see a little bit of a hole that allows us to look through into a space that sits right in the middle of the hypothalamus called the third ventricle. Just behind the stalk of the pituitary are two bumps that define the posterior limit of the hypothalamus, those are called the mammillary bodies, which are seen right here. Now, if I tilt this specimen a little bit more, you can appreciate a dark space just behind these mammillary bodies. And this is roughly the junction of the diencephalon and the midbrain. In fact, the space is defined by these two broad columns called the cerebral peduncles or cerebral stalks one on either side of this space. Those stalks are a component of the midbrain or the mesencephalon. And as the term peduncle or stalk implies, this is a massive bundle of white matter that allows the forebrain to connect with everything below it, the hindbrain and the spinal cord. Now just inferior to the cerebral peduncles, as we see them here in the midbrain, is the pons and the cerebellum. The pons extends out laterally, again another massive bundle of white matter connecting the brainstem to the cerebellum. And just inferior to the pons, we have the medulla oblongata, or the medulla for short. And on the ventral view of the medulla, two striking features appear along the midline. It's a pair of structures called the medullary pyramids that run on either side of the midline. This is a very important fiber pathway that runs through the brainstem. It's called the cortical spinal tract, and there's one on each side of the midline. These tracts contain the fibers of the motor cortex that are sending their axons down into the spinal cord to govern voluntary movement. One additional feature of the medulla that sits just next to the medullary pyramid is this bulging shape. It looks like an olive that has been cut in half and stuck to the side of the medulla, just lateral to the medullary pyramid. And thankfully, that's what we call this structure. This structure is called the olive, so it's easy to remember. So we have the medullary pyramids right along the midline, and then just lateral to the medullary pyramid is this bulging structure called the olive. Now, let's turn our attention to the cerebral cortex as we can see it on the inferior surface of the brain. So what we see towards the front of the brain is the inferior surface of the frontal lobe. And this part of the frontal lobe sits right above the orbits in the skull. And for that reason, we call this the orbital cortex.
just near the posterior part of the frontal lobe, we begin to encounter the temporal lobe, which grows out and underneath the frontal portion of uh, the lateral fissure. So in this part of the cortex, we're looking at the inferior surface of the temporal lobe. But to see the rest of the inferior surface of the temporal lobe, we need to move to a different specimen uh, that has had the brainstem and the cerebellum removed. And now in a second specimen, we can have a more clear view of the entire ventral surface of the brain uh, with the brainstem and cerebellum removed so that we can see the features on the cerebral cortex of the inferior uh, temporal and occipital lobes. So here again is the temporal lobe that extends from the posterior part of the frontal lobe all the way back towards the occipital lobe with the junction being somewhere in this region right about here. So this bit of brain is the temporal lobe. And on its inferior surface, we have a long gyrus that extends throughout the length of the inferior temporal lobe back towards the occipital lobe. That's called the occipital temporal gyrus. Sometimes there's a small sulcus that divides it into a lateral and medial components. And then along the medial edge of the temporal lobe, there's a structure that we call the parahippocampal gyrus. And deep in the anterior part of the temporal lobe in this position, this parahippocampal gyrus folds in upon itself into a structure that we call the hippocampus. And we'll see the hippocampus when we look at sections through the brain. Now the occipital temporal gyrus and the parahippocampal gyrus extend down into the occipital lobe. And at some point in the occipital lobe, we define a region that is a boundary between the lingual gyrus near the midline and what remains here of the occipital temporal gyrus. Sometimes this region of the inferior occipital lobe is called the fusiform gyrus because of the superficial shape that is sometimes appreciated as these sulci come together. We see similar features in the opposite hemisphere, the same set of long lateral and medial occipital temporal gyri, and then along the midline of the temporal lobe, the parahippocampal gyrus.